The release of the so-called Twitter files has exposed a vast censorship network, a censorship network that is bigger than we previously thought. This isn't just the case of, let's say, uh, the FBI or the CDC uh, writing to Twitter and saying, hey, guys, or meeting with Twitter and saying, hey, guys, you have content moderation policies and we want to urge you to enforce them. No, nothing like that. We're talking about multiple federal and state agencies. We're talking about multiple parts of the government, uh, the Department of Homeland Security, in some cases, even intelligence agencies whose focus is international, nevertheless getting involved in domestic content moderation here uh, on the platforms like Twitter. And of course, when I say Twitter, you can fully assume that the same or more is going on with YouTube, is going on with, um, with Google, is going on with Facebook, and perhaps even with Apple perhaps even with Amazon. We need to know. Now, uh, as this evidence is coming to light, and by the way, in the earlier episodes of the Twitter files, it was really more the Biden campaign is driving it, the media is censoring the Hunter Biden story, but you were not talking about agencies in the government. You weren't talking about the government actively involved in suppressing speech, but now you are. The latest Twitter file, so-called Twitter file six, is really all about the documenting the way and the extent to which the FBI, which is often coordinating on behalf of other agencies like DHS, has constant communications with Twitter and is listing large numbers of individual accounts. And in some cases, accounts that are pretty small, in some cases, satirical accounts to get them banned. Um, the It's now really clear that the FBI was censoring, was actively involved with Twitter to censor constitutionally protected speech and not misinformation, but true statements. In some cases, the FBI admits this is true, but we still think that it should be suppressed. So this is censoring not misinformation, not foreign-driven disinformation, but merely information. So the FBI, I think we can now agree, uh, is a serious threat uh, to a functioning democracy, our functioning uh, democracy. Now, Another threat, oddly enough, comes from the media, which has not been covering the Twitter files at all. Now, there's Twitter's been in the news quite a bit lately, but Twitter's been in the news because of Elon Musk banning or temporarily banning or suspending, I guess more accurately, some journalists who uh, were publishing, who were basically putting out content that uh, located uh, Elon Musk's jet. In other words, that was sort of doxing him, uh, revealing his location, and in some ways, putting him and his family, as he saw it, in danger. And the media was all over this. So, yo, Elon Musk, you're a hypocrite. You talk about free speech. Why are you banning journalists? And, and the, the way that they said journalists, the kind of solemnity of it, implied that journalists are superior people. They should be held to a different standard. I mean, these are the same people who didn't bat an eyelid. Not only didn't bat an eyelid, were cheerleaders for the banning of hundreds of thousands, millions of Americans, and they were okay with it. Now, when one or two of their own friends are banned, suddenly the world is coming to an end. Suddenly it's the apocalypse. And so the hypocrisy is really on the side of the media. Uh, here is uh, Dan Rather, who, by the way, is just always trying to be relevant and make himself important. He goes, before I'm banned on this site, please find me. And he tells you where you can find him elsewhere. Here's me responding to Dan Rather. The case for banning you is the same as the case for removing a mound of dung from the side of the road. It's really not worth the trouble since no one's paying attention to the dung anyway. So um, I don't think that Dan Rather, uh, anyone is even concerned, least, least of all Elon Musk. Now, uh, the issue at Twitter is um, it has now revealed this giant censorship web, a censorship network. And, um, and here is, um, here's what I said. The mainstream media cannot risk covering the Twitter files. Why? Because if they admit rampant collusion between government agencies and Twitter, they're going to have to inquire about Facebook, YouTube, Apple, Google, the whole censorship regime would unravel better to pretend that nothing is happening. And I got an interesting response from one Elon Musk. One word, exactly.
exactly. So this is sort of the Twitter boss weighing in on the true significance of these Twitter files. Look, we're in a very dysfunctional uh, political environment and um, uh, one in which the media is not covering the things that it should cover that are news, that are manifestly important. I mean, who could deny that evidence and detailed evidence, this is chapter and verse evidence. This is, um, this is the release of internal communications with the names and the names of all the accounts that need to be banned, the names of the people involved at Twitter. All of this is out there. It's undeniable. No one's claiming that it's not genuine. And yet, Nothing from the New York Times, nothing in the Washington Post, nothing on NBC. So as citizens, we've just got to realize that our media is, if not an officially state-controlled media, acting like one. And we've just got to get the information directly. We've got to see the implications. I hope the appropriate lawsuits are being filed. Why? Because when you have active government collusion with high-tech platforms, this is a serious violation of the First Amendment, and the Supreme Court will need to, not just want to, look into this.